good morning, brothers and sisters. Pastor Steve here. So glad you've joined me for today's devotion that is part of our Bible reading plan at First Baptist. Today we are in the shortest book in the Old Testament, just one chapter, the book of Obadiah, one of the prophets. And um, uh, there's something that God spoke to my heart as I was reading this that I want to share with you. There are some details I'm not going to get into today because I'm planning to preach from Obadiah this coming Sunday, October 24, and I hope you'll join me for that. But what I do want to talk about is the tragedy of uh, generational family conflict. Generational family conflict. Um. Obadiah um, is a prophet, and his entire message is directed to the people of Edom. So here he's not preaching to the Jews. His entire prophecy, this whole chapter, is a message to the people of Edom, which was a country to the southeast of uh, the southern kingdom of Judah. Uh, today it would be part of the southern area of uh, Jordan. Um, and Edom was um, inhabited by the descendants of Esau. And Judah, as you'll remember, were the descendants of Esau's brother, Jacob. And you remember the story from the book of Genesis. Uh, they were twins, and Esau was born first, but uh, he sold his birthright to Jacob, and then Jacob and his mother conspired to steal his the his his uh, firstborn inheritance from his dad when his dad was old and blind, and there was conflict between Esau and Jacob for much of their life. Uh, both of them uh, were to blame because both of them did wrong, and unfortunately, even though they were kin and their descendants were kin, there was always conflict between them. Um, during the days of Moses and the exodus from Egypt, uh, the people of Israel wanted to pass through the country of Edom on their way to the Promised Land, on what was known as the King's Highway. It was the shortest route from Egypt up to the Promised Land. And the, the king of Edom and the people said no. And so they had to take the long way around. Uh, the Edomites did not attack the Jews, but they didn't let them pass through their, their country. And that intensified the animosity between these descendants who were related to each other. Um, during the Old Testament period, there were times when they cooperated together as nations to fight other nations. There were times they fought each other. King David conquered and subjected the Edomites to Israel, and they became sort of a vassal state, if you will. Stayed that way for a number of years. And then in the 850s B.C., give or take, um, um, a group of Arabs and uh, Philistines joined together to attack Jerusalem, and the Edomites joined them. And uh, the palace in Jerusalem was ransacked, and, and it was a difficult time. And so Obadiah is preaching a message to the Edomites because of their participation in that attack on their, their uh, kinsmen, if you will. And that's just a, a high-level overview. You, you can read Obadiah and, and with that background understand it that in their arrogance, they, they, they were happy with what they had done. And, and it didn't bother them that their kinsmen, the Jews, were suffering, and they even participated in that, contributing to that, to that suffering. Now, as I was reading all of that, and I know I'm not reading verses today a whole lot. I'm just giving you the story so it'll make sense when you read it. But, but as I was reading Obadiah, what stood out to me was it went back all those centuries to two brothers, twins, who um, didn't get along, and whose parents, if you remember our devotions last earlier this year in the book of Genesis, whose parents kind of contributed to the dysfunction because, you know, the dad liked 
Esau better and the mom liked Jacob better and these brothers had a fallen out. And, and here it is, generation after generation after generation, it's been passed down to their descendants. And they were not always good to each other. You know, maybe it hasn't gone on for centuries, but you and I both know families that have passed on conflict and bad attitudes one generation to the next. This side of the family doesn't like that side of the family. That side of the family won't have anything to do with this other side of the family. You've seen it. Brothers and sisters that have a falling out over a will. Um, cousins that hate each other, don't understand each other, don't like each other. Do you know what keeps people who've experienced generational conflict from reconciling? It's what Obadiah talks about. Look at verse 3. He said, the arrogance of your heart has deceived you. The arrogance of your heart. Pride. Pride keeps us from apologizing. Pride keeps us from forgiving. Pride keeps us from trying to understand the other person and their point of view. Pride prevents us from being humble. Pride keeps us from reconciling. Pride, arrogance, pride, arrogance. Now, both sides have to cooperate. But if pride's keeping you from doing your part, look in the mirror. And then more importantly, get on your knees before the Lord and ask him to give you a heart that is soft and humble instead of one that is proud and arrogant. People are more important than your pride. And if you're part of a family that's had generational conflict, why don't you change the future by changing your present? Why don't you pass down to your children something different than you received from those who came before you? This book of Obadiah, God's condemnation of the Edomites, just brought to mind the centuries-long generational conflict and how sad that was. And it's sad today when families don't get along. That's the word for today. I, I hope you'll change the future if you need to. And I'll see you tomorrow.